The heart of the brake system is the master cylinder, which controls the hydraulic pressure of the entire system. Unfortunately, over many years, the master cylinder and reservoir have a tendency to wear out and leak. The leakage can occur internally or externally, resulting in a weakened braking system. Our project car actually had a hole, red arrow, in the reservoir that allowed contaminants into the master cylinder ruining it. Never let your brake components get to this level of neglect. Begin by removing the level sensor, yellow arrow, connector from the top of the reservoir. You'll want to try and get as much brake fluid as you can out of the fluid reservoir on top of the master cylinder. Open the cap on the reservoir and remove the strainer. Using a fluid pump or turkey baster, get as much of the old fluid out as you can. This helps prevent excessive spilling of brake fluid inside the engine compartment. It's also helpful to stuff a bunch of old rags or paper towels under the master cylinder to absorb any spills. Use a 12 mm flared nut wrench and remove the two brake lines, red arrows, from the master cylinder. Make sure you use a flared nut wrench and that it is seated correctly. You do not want to strip the nut. Also, be prepared to catch the small amount of brake fluid that is going to come out. You are going to have to remove the brake lines that connect to the ABS unit to get the master cylinder out. Disconnect the lines, yellow and red arrows, from the ABS unit. Follow the lines where they pass through the sheet metal and remove them from the rubber grommets, green arrows, and set them aside. There is a rocker plenum on the front of the master cylinder. Remove the crush washer, yellow arrow, that secures it to the rubber grommet. The crush washer will need to be replaced as it's a single-use piece. Slide the rocker off the front of the cylinder and remove it from the car. The yellow arrow shows where the master cylinder sits, and the red arrow shows how it attaches to the car. Disconnect the brake pressure sensors, yellow arrow, from the bottom of each cylinder. Now locate the two 13 mm nuts on either side of the master cylinder. Yellow arrow, one shown. These nuts hold the master cylinder in place. You'll probably need an extension with a universal joint in order to reach both nuts. Pull the master cylinder straight forward off of the brake booster, then tilt it slightly sideways and remove it from the car. Make sure it clears the studs, red arrow, before tilting it to remove from the car. Use a T20 torque driver and remove the screw securing the reservoir from the master cylinder as indicated by the yellow arrow. You'll want to mount the master cylinder in a vise and then pry the fluid reservoir out of the rubber grommets on the top. It should pop out with just a little force. Always install new gaskets when replacing the reservoir. Note, when you reinstall the master cylinder, the lower nut is very difficult to access. Try placing a small amount of tape or a small piece of rubber glove between the nut and the socket to help keep the nut in place. Just make sure the threads are clear. When installing the master cylinder into the brake booster, take extreme care that the thrust rod sits in the master cylinder. Otherwise, you can damage it and your brakes will not work. You'll want to bench bleed your master cylinder before installing it, and then once installed, you must completely bleed the entire brake system. Installation is the reverse of removal, and remember, do not drive your car until you have completely bled your brakes. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional instructions on those procedures. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.